Welcome. It's, uh, it's great, great to see everyone here. This is our uh, March Research and Technology Forum. Um, say quickly, uh, our April Forum is just a couple of weeks away. Um, this, uh, this schedule of, uh, of today's forum was driven by a spring break at Syracuse University last week. So next, uh, the April Forum will be on um, April 9th. And, uh, and it will focus on um, energy efficiency in industrial set settings. It's going to be uh, moderated by uh, Patrick Jackson from, uh, from Cornell. Uh, you see the, the list of speakers there, so we're looking forward uh, to uh, April. But uh, today, we're, uh, we're thrilled to present on um, our, uh, our new project, uh, uh, for advanced manufacturing and thermal and environmental control technologies. Um, we have uh, two presentations uh, by uh, two of the companies in, uh, in this cluster, and then I'm going to give an opening presentation um, about, the, about the cluster in the project. Uh, and then in the, in the format of what we're planning for this afternoon, after these three presentations, we'll have time for a conversation, and we'd like to facilitate that conversation in the, in the room. Uh, so we're, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, so without, without further ado, I'm going to look to Tammy Rosani. Are there other things I should say right now? <laughs> so, <laughs> just a uh, natural. Okay. So, uh, so how about we, we turn down the lights? Put you all to sleep. Um, so I, I, I think, uh, again, everyone in the room, I'm assuming, uh, is aware that um, um, last year there was a uh, significant competition uh, at the federal level uh, across uh, five different federal agencies came together uh, offering funding to regions uh, to support in, in, uh, initiatives that would um, promote applications of advanced manufacturing within regional clusters. So at the federal level, this was called the Advanced Manufacturing Jobs and Innovation Accelerator Challenge. It involved these five uh, federal agencies, uh, Economic Development Administration, Department of Energy, Department of Labor, Small Business Administration, and uh, NIST's Manufacturing Extension Partnership. Uh, they all put their funds together, and we, were, we, we worked with uh, a, uh, a, a group of collaborators in, uh, in central New York to put in an, an application focused on a cluster that we called thermal and environmental control systems. And we were thrilled to win. So we, we won one of uh, 10 awards nationally. We learned later there were 55 applications. Uh, the, uh, and this is actually a, a significant uh, project nationally. It's viewed as a uh, a precursor for a, uh, an initiative that uh, President Obama announced in the, in the State of the Union address uh, about a, a billion dollar federal investment in manufacturing innovation. So this is like a, uh, a prototype of, uh, of the forthcoming uh, federal, federal initiative. Ten projects across the country, there are two in New York, two in Pennsylvania, one in Michigan, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Arizona, California, there's one right at the, the uh, crossing the border at, at Washington and Oregon. Um, each of these projects, again, is focused on investing in a regional cluster. This is an idea that, that the Obama administration has embraced for economic development, um, that, uh, that companies of a similar type that share services and, uh, and, a, and a variety of other, uh, other needs uh, often are observed to cluster in, in geographic regions. Think of uh, Silicon Valley and uh, Route 128 around Boston and Research Triangle Park uh, as, uh, as examples of clusters. So at the federal level, there's the idea that if, if federal agencies can come together to uh, make investments that promote this uh, activity of clusters, it would be a good thing for the country. So they, they do that by aligning resources from multiple agencies. This specific thing, this specific uh, program, is intended to accelerate innovations into manufacturing companies. And of course, the idea is to create and retain jobs. 
uh, and then further uh, to strengthen the U.S. position in, in uh, emerging areas of advanced manufacturing. And we're, we're one of ten. Um, we um, quickly, uh, other clusters, the other one in, in New York is in the Rochester area, and it focuses on optics. In Pennsylvania, there's a cluster in the Philadelphia area that's targeting transportation. Uh, and in the Pittsburgh area, it's targeting uh, metals and, and electrical equipment. In Michigan, it's, a, it's a contract manufacturing. Uh, in, uh, in Tennessee, around uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, there's an initiative that focuses on uh, rapid prototyping. In Oklahoma, it's oil and gas. In uh, Arizona, in southern Arizona, it's aerospace and defense. In California, it's uh, biomedical devices. And uh, in Washington and Oregon, it's uh, advanced materials. So our, uh, our cluster focuses, so, so uh, first uh, let's ask the question, so what's a cluster? <laughs> the word cluster is used in, in various places in, in a derogatory way. So why, why would the federal government want to promote a cluster? So the idea of a, of a regional cluster you know, of course, there's a, there's a definition, so the definition in the, in the uh, notice of the federal funding opportunity is um, industry clusters are networks of interconnected firms and supporting institutions that accelerate innovation, business formation, and job creation. So again, you think about the clusters of Silicon Valley and other, other places, you see a cluster of firms and, and they seem to feed off one another and promote the development of innovation and, uh, and new businesses and job, job creation. So then further, uh, there's a statement that if you look at how clusters develop, um, and you know, the ac academics study this, they say clusters emerge as a result of private enterprises taking advantage of a reason's assets and strengths in the business environment. So clusters emerge as a result of private enterprises. So the private enterprises are on this side of the room. <laughs> and, and if there's a cluster in this region, it's because it'll emerge because of your acts of taking advantage of the region's assets and strengths. So then there's a, there's a comma here, and this goes on to say that uh, uh, these clusters are often supported by intermediaries and other institutions that help provide information and networks, such as economic development organizations, workforce development boards, business incubators or accelerators, members of chambers of commerce, and university-based consortia. That's the group on this side of the room. So if a cluster is going to emerge in central New York, it's going to be because, it'll be because we have these companies that are working together to take advantage of, of the assets. And we have a team that has federal support for the next three years to help a cluster emerge. So our, our, our job is to make a wedding, so we have to the bride side and the groom side here, you know, that, that we see this great opportunity for the region to, to use the resources that we've secured through this grant such that you know, year, years from now, together, we'll look back and say, you know, that was a great thing that we did, that it catalyzed growth in the companies in the region. And that's, that's what this project is, uh, is about. So um, also, we should just touch, can I answer the question? So what's advanced manufacturing? Uh, here's the definition. You know, depend on the coordination and use of information and computation software sensing. Make use of cutting edge materials, emerging capabilities. Uh, involves both new ways to manufacture existing products and the manufacture of new products emerging from new advanced technologies. Um, often when there's a speaker talking about advanced, advanced manufacturing in the U.S., uh, someone will make a statement saying, if there's a manufacturer who's manufacturing in the U.S., that's an advanced manufacturer. So, <laughs> so that, that you, you've got a value proposition and, and uh, you've worked out your cost of manufacturing in the U.S., you're, you're clearly using, uh, applying advanced um, ma manufacturing. Uh, so now what is the cluster that we've defined? We made up this acronym to, to define the opportunity that we see in the region of central New York and center state New York, and it ties together the uh, strengths of a set of at least 40 companies that we identify 
including manufacturers of systems and their suppliers, across a broad range of areas dealing with thermal and environmental control. Uh, so we, we uh, in our application, we identified 38 companies. Actually, a lot, a lot of them are clustered here in, uh, in East Syracuse and DeWitt. Uh, and many, many of these companies were suppliers to Carrier or uh, founded by, by uh, former employees of Carrier. In fact, we can ask, maybe on, on this side of the room, uh, so over your, your individual careers, how many individuals at one time or another happened to work for Carrier? So this is, we've done this exercise before, give more hands. But uh, so that's, that's good. So that, that the region attracts a, a workforce uh, in, uh, in these, uh, across, across these areas. Um, so now I'll, I'll talk again, you know, I, I have to, to, to folks, folks in industry, this is how we, we view the cluster of companies locally. So the first question is, so what are the products that the companies or their suppliers uh, are, are making and to what markets are they going? So your markets include power generation, building HVAC for both residential and commercial buildings, specialty HVAC, uh, heating and cooling and power generation for data centers, refrigeration, manufacturing process cooling, cryogenic refrigeration, uh, manufacturing process heating, pharmaceutical processing, food and dairy processing, potable water supply, wastewater treatment. So those are the applications that the companies in the region are, uh, those are the markets that they are targeting and the applications that the systems are, are meeting. So then if we think about uh, these uh, systems, we can think of as systems and the elemental component technologies and then the components that go into, into the technologies and then further kind of bring, bring uh, order to uh, the, uh, the array of companies that we have in the region. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make, make a little diagram here and say things that are hot go on the top and things that are cold go on the bottom and things that deal with liquids go on the left and things that deal with gases go on the right. So what are the systems that, that we know that we have manufacturers in the region that are, that are targeting? So there's building HVAC systems, and those systems include fans and air terminals and air filters and compressors and tubing and filter media and controls and sensors and network devices. So we have all those companies in the region. Further, uh, if you can make, if you have all those products, you can use those products for other applications, a floral display, wine cellars, refrigeration, cryogenic refrigeration. Uh, let's go the other way. So we can make, uh, there are companies that make furnaces, boilers, uh, we need uh, pumps, pump impellers. If you can make pump impellers, you can make turbine blades, and we have companies that do that, gaskets, uh, tubing, uh, mineral oil heater, emission scrubbers, reactors, water purification, wastewater treatment, uh, liquid filters. That's, that's the, the array of companies that we have in central New York. So then in the room, I think we have, uh, so I know we have ECR International. We have Bitzer Scroll. We're going to have presentations of introduction from, from uh, Bitzer Scroll and ECR International. We have New Climate. New Climate. Uh, Jim Miller has just come in. This is like right, right at the right moment from New Climate, Healthway, uh, Yaya from Health, Healthway. Uh, Clark Air Systems, Clark Air Systems, air filtration, air innovations, air innovations, specialty HVAC, Cryomech, Rich Dowsman, the coolest guy in town, uh, will uh, condense, will uh, li liquefy your helium. Uh, Anoran, Anoran, come on, Anoran. Anoran makes wireless devices for communication and specifically targeting applications in uh, building systems as a niche market for Anoran's expertise. Falk Precision. Falk Precision make for spe specialty parts for these customers, including others. Uh, thermal Rise. Thermal Rise. Uh, th thermal Rise innovative uh, heat exchanger for HVAC applications. 
Actually, you know, Jim Miller, you, gotta, you guys got to talk. This is why we're going to do this, actually. This is what our cluster is. Um, Fulton, Jim Pettiford, Mark Hilton from Fulton. Feldmeyer, Feldmeyer in the room? Feldmeyer was going to come. So are there any other companies I haven't yet named? So we go back backward. So there, there's 11 companies. It's like a, a quarter of the cluster is in the room. And we're thrilled that you're here, actually, for us to have the conversation about um, what our intentions are for supporting your development and growth. That's, that's what, actually, this, this side of the room wants, uh, wants to assist with. But let's, let's go further. So who isn't here? Uh, so Feld Feldmeyer was, was going to come, and it, it, had, it hasn't yet arrived. Um, RAM fabricating tubing, uh, ICM controls, Infocon for sensors, Cold Point, uh, Dykin McQuay in Auburn, uh, Con Continental, uh, Gould's Pumps, uh, ESCO, formerly Gray Syracuse and Chittenango, makes, uh, makes turbine blades for, for stationary gas turbines and other applications. Higby Gaskets, supplier to many of these companies. Uh, O'Brien and Gear, a manufacturer of a, a variety of, uh, of uh, products that fit in this space. Paul Trinity, water, water filtration, mm -hmm. Oberdorfer pumps. Uh, so that, that is the set of companies that we've identified and we're identifying others, particularly suppliers to these companies. So we'd like to understand the full supply chain and to create connections in the supply chain between the companies that, uh, that have not yet been created. So what is the project? So now, now quick, so what's our regional cluster? So the regional cluster is a network of uh, interconnected firms and supporting institutions. So the, the project is this point. So the intermediaries and institutions that help the companies so we, we went after that federal funding because we were el el eligible to go for it. But our success actually will be measured by jobs and innovation in the companies in our region that we are targeting. So you know you, you need to help us be successful. You need to help us be successful by being successful. <laughs> but then we need to know from you how how we can help. You know, what, what can we do to advance your companies and to help you create create jobs and innovations? This is, uh, you've seen in our, our announcement that we have $3.2 million over three years. There's a lot of detail on, on this slide. I'm going to just say quickly, these are the seven entities that came together to, to uh, file the application. So Syracuse University and, and uh, Syracuse Center of Excellence, Center State CEO, MACNI, uh, NYSTAR, the state, state office that is the New York State's NIST-funded manufacturing extension partnership, and then NYSTAR funds across the state uh, 10 different regional technology development organizations, including the Central New York uh, TDO, uh, which actually is the, essentially the face of NYSTAR in our, our region. Uh, SUNY ESF and, uh, and OCC, and in addition we had commitments of, of, of matching funds from, uh, from NYSERDA and ESD. So actually in, in going after this, one of the ideas is you bring together and align resources. We actually have 10 different sponsored projects that provide a total of $3.2 million over, uh, over the three year period. What we, what we hope will we'll present to the companies is a single interface and you won't, you won't need to understand what we need to understand about keeping track of the sources of the funds and, and how they're used. The main, main thing we've done is we've, we've gone out, we've won five separate federal awards totaling $1.9 million and we've brought in other resources from state and pri private resources totaling $1.3 million to, to put together a project that has resources of, of $3.2 million, $3 million over, uh, over three years. So what are our project activities? We have, we're, we're envisioning, and this is one of our fir first moments of a, of a reality check to have a conversation with companies, uh, and what, what we wrote in our application was we would do five main things, cluster development, so our sense is the companies don't see themselves as a cluster right now, so we have to develop the cluster. 
Uh, innovation acceleration, so helping companies get at resources for uh, uh, either improved products or new products. Accelerating exports, the region has an, has an initiative underway to double exports from the region <coughs> over five years. We've positioned this project to be part of that initiative. So where we can help companies in this cluster double your exports or start exporting if you're not exporting, that's part of our project. Uh, doing workforce training and, uh, and specifically uh, one of the project objectives focuses on uh, di disadvantaged communities in our region and uh, opportunities to help revitalize. So there's, a, there's a criteria for, um, that, that defines what's a disadvantaged community. And, and the first one, one thing we should say, that we have two companies in the room that are in Oswego County. All of Oswego County counts as a disadvantaged community. So it meets, meets the criteria. So, that, so that's, that's one, one of the areas where we, where we have funding. In cluster development, we are focused on strengthening regional networks, uh, assisting in developing target co targeted collaborations and joint ventures among lo local companies, and then marketing the region to others outside, including where it, it would strengthen the cluster going after companies to come into the region and locate in the region. And for that, I, I'd ask to, to all, all the companies, you know, are there uh, customers that you will have, particularly customers, if you have customers that are located outside the US that might be looking to establish a presence in the US, uh, if you can help us identify companies that would be beneficial to your company to have located nearby, you know, that, that would be something that we would welcome the opportunity to work on. And then the innovation acceleration, uh, the Central New York TDO has a well-established well program of services uh, to support uh, companies in, a, in the process of, uh, of engineering innovations. And we also have support through, uh, through the Department of Energy for, uh, for targeted R&D projects. And we look to engage uh, local companies in helping us define the priorities for those projects. So finally, we're going to ask when we get to the discussion phase of, uh, of our, our session this afternoon, we really want to know from the companies, what are the services that are of most interest to your firm? So I've just talked about the services that we intend to provide. If we miss the mark, if there's something that you need that's not on that list, we need, you know, this would be a great time for you, for you to let, let us know. Uh, and if we hit the mark, you know, we welcome that, that feedback too. So really the question to the companies is, you know, what, what is the, what's your critical need right now? You know, from the uh, intermediaries and the service providers, what are, what are those areas that, that uh, would be of, of greatest value to your firm? And then the second question is, um, what value do you believe a strong cluster can offer to the manufacturers here in central New York? So you know, just as, uh, uh, so th those will be the questions that I'm going to ask you to think about uh, as we hear two, two presentations now. Um, so before, before we get to the presentations, why don't I just open the floor just quickly. Well, are there any questions <laughs> that you want to raise about the project or what we're going to do this afternoon? With that, we'll, we'll hear, hearing them, we'll get on to uh, to the presentations. So I'm, I'm pleased uh, that. Uh, uh, so I'll say first, first of all, these, these are the first. You know, we've identified 40 some companies in the region that we we uh, we view as being in the, the cluster. Uh, we um, at our October symposium, we had a session uh, where we asked three companies to, to give presentations, three companies that, that are, are in the cluster, and actually it was, we were announced that we were getting this award a week, week before a symposium, so we had already lined, lined that up. Um, so in, in that, in our symposium, um, we had uh, Fulton and New Climate and Cryonic uh, actually gave, gave presentations, so Jim Pettiford and Rich Dalsman, actually my recollection is it was John DeMillo, Ed Campagna. So Ed, Ed Campagna gave, gave the presentation. So we had three like prototype presentations. And, and um, so now I'm, I'm grateful that um, Jim Cullen and 
Joe Lang. You knew you were going to get it wrong. I knew I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> It's Joe Langlois. 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 I just like skewing myself up for a failure. Um, that that um, we've asked uh, Jim and Joe to give presentations on their companies, to introduce their companies really to the other companies and also to the, the, the team here. I've given them an out outline of what I'd like them to uh, address. And ideally, these would be like templates of presentations that everybody in the room would give. And that this is part of building the cluster. It's like we, we get to know the companies, what their products are, what their markets are, what their R&D opportunities are, and, uh, and that, that that information shared helps us, helps us build the cluster. In fact, I'll, I'll go out on the on unscripted uh, limb here and say, now we'll take volunteers for another round of this that will deliver, you know, now we have to decide the frequency. If we have the capacity to do this once a month or at whatever frequency, you know, we, we'd like to tee up, you know, three, three more presentations for, you know, a date that we'll pick in April, and then three more and three more. So, so in, the, in that way, we can all share and understand the, the capabilities in the region. 